Hello, welcome back to Crafted Bricks. My name is Simon. In this video, I'm going to be building this amazing vintage Technic shuttle. This is set number 8480, released back in 1996, so it is 24 years old now. But this is one of my holy grail sets, the set I've been after for many years, and I managed to pick it up for a great price from Bricklink about two months ago. So I'm genuinely excited to build this set and actually show you the build and then share all the amazing details and functions of this model with you. Now, before I go any further with the introduction for this video, I actually just wanted to thank everyone for all the very positive comments that you left for my last few videos. I was, I was genuinely really touched and inspired by your comments. It means a lot to someone who's sort of starting off the YouTube channel to read so many great comments. So thank you so much for that. And thank you to my subscribers. I've just gone over 100 subscribers and that's also really exciting to see. So thank you so much. I'm really glad that you're enjoying this content. I'm going to be working hard to sort of get better at shooting videos and producing videos and producing things that you like to watch. Now this is going to be a vintage Technic build. It's the first vintage Technic build that I've done on my channel. I'd really love to know from you in the comments below whether you'd like to see more vintage Technic on my channel. I'm a big fan of vintage Technic and the reason for that is vintage Technic sets just have that beautiful sort of rawness to them. You can really see how all the functions and features work. They don't rely on 50 or 100 stickers for look. They just look good by design. And they have this real sort of raw, tactile, great feel to them. So I'm a big fan of Technic LEGO. You can probably tell from that little intro just there. I'd love to know whether you'd like to see more of these type of builds on my channel or not. Now, I want to do a shout out to Chad. So thank you so much, Chad, from the Bricklink store, Brickhound. Chad, thank you for sending me photos of this set. That gave me a lot of confidence that I was buying a set where all the pieces are in brand new condition. And thank you for packing the set so well, as you can see, it has arrived safely. And on this note, I actually wanted to share with you my top four tips for buying vintage or retired, especially expensive sets from Bricklink. Now this set is going sort of from anywhere from 650 Australian dollars up to about one and a half grand. So if you're buying something like that, whether it's a set like this or any of the other type of very expensive and retired sets on Bricklink, you probably wanna follow these four tips to make sure to avoid any disappointment. Tip number one is always ask your Bricklink seller to send you some photos of the set. That's gonna give you a lot of information in terms of the condition of the set. So whether you really are buying a new set or if you're buying a used set, it's actually gonna give you a lot of information about the condition of that set, particularly the condition of the parts, you know, whether they're yellowed or chipped or damaged at all. So always ask the Bricklink seller to send you some photos. That's tip number one. Tip number two is check out the feedback for your Bricklink seller before you go ahead and purchase. If you see any comments where there might be some criticism about you know, poor packaging or bad quality or anything like that, I always go by the principle of where there's smoke, there's fire. If you do see any of those sort of comments, you're probably best to avoid any future disappointment to try getting that set from a different Bricklink seller. My third tip is always ask for a shipping quote before you go ahead and purchase the set. In some cases, you'll actually be surprised, especially when purchasing from overseas. Sometimes the shipping cost can actually be more than the, the set price itself, and you really wanna know what your total cost is for when you're buying a set like this one. I always ask for a shipping quote. I know in at the moment for some European sellers, they're unfortunately having to go ship by DHL Express with some of the coronavirus restrictions and DHL Express shipping while quick is extremely expensive. So definitely go ahead, ask for a shipping quote ahead of getting a purchase and then you can make a more informed decision. And my final tip is once you've actually made that purchase, always insist that the Bricklink seller pack your set extremely well. I always ask for bubble wrap to go around the set and then the whole thing be put into a strong cardboard shipping box. And that's just to protect your ship, your set in transit. I know this particular set came from the US and took about five weeks to arrive. That's a long journey, a lot of potential for sort of mishap or for your set to be damaged. So you definitely want your set to be well protected. So I think if you follow those four tips for making a you know, potentially expensive purchase from Bricklink, I think you'll be well placed to avoid future disappointment. Okay, I think it's time for me to stop talking. I'm actually gonna change up the studio a little bit so I can shoot in an overhead view. I'm gonna do like a speed build type section of this set, and then I'm gonna come right back and show you all the beautiful features and details of this model. 
Okay, the build is done as you can see. This is a beautiful model. I am so happy with the result. Now I definitely underestimated how long it was gonna take me to film the build sequence you just saw and complete the build of this model. I thought it was gonna take me about a day. It actually took me three days to complete this build. It is an extremely challenging build and vintage Technic sets have very sort of old school instructions where often the instruction steps might have 20 or more parts to a single step. You don't really see that in more modern Technic sets. So at every build step, I really had to pay close attention to the build step diagram and make sure I didn't make any mistakes, especially with a set like this. There is so much going on here to support all the functions this model has. A lot of different gears and axles and different Technic elements used and any mistake, particularly positioning of some of the gears and so on, can actually really affect the later stages of the model or how well those functions perform. So I really was taking it slow and you know, checking my work as I went. But you know, the result is fantastic. I'm so happy with this model and the overwhelming sense that I have is this is a beautifully engineered Technic set. Probably one of the best Technic sets that I've made to date, although it is quite a vintage and an old school set, it just has so many cool features and so much going on, but also it just looks beautiful. It really does look like the real world shuttle. You know, they've got this light, nice downward slope here with it sitting on its landing gear. 
the color scheme is on point, obviously, with the black and white, but then all the really good shapes. So, you know, all the sort of engines at the rear, the shape of the wings here, the shape of the cockpit at the front and so on. It is just beautiful. So I think it's time for me to show you now all the different features of this model. There's actually a function selector switch here at the top of the model. Now, if I just switch that over to the bay doors function, and then there's a power switch at the back here. So I'm activating the power with that switch then set to its particular function. And voila, you can see the bay doors open. That just is fantastic. Then I'm just gonna switch this over now to the crane inside the bay of the model. And that's gonna lift this satellite up here. Then I'm gonna switch over to the turntable this crane is mounted on and just rotate that to the front so you can see this little satellite piece here. Fantastic. Now, one thing I am noticing is that with the power cables here, there's actually a little motor here in the satellite here. If I rotate things too much, there's a bit of strain on those cables. So it's just something that I've got to be, <laughs> got to be careful about while I'm doing this demo for you. And the other switch, this switch here at the front is for the arms of this satellite. As I mentioned, there's a second motor here. It is a small, small motor, so it's a little bit slow to do this, but there you go. You can see these arms opening up. That is fantastic. Beautiful. Now the interesting thing about this particular set is it uses a lot of rubber bands. You can see a rubber band here on the pulley and there's a few rubber bands for the main motor, which is just housed just in here. I actually really like that because it means when a particular function gets to its maximum point, like say these satellite arms, for example, there's none of that sort of horrible mashing of gears that you get with some more modern technique motorized sets, is that when they get to a maximum point for their particular function, the gears can kind of just lock together and mash. Whereas with rubber bands, when that particular function on this particular model gets to its maximum point, the rubber bands just slip over the pulleys. So it's a really clever way to avoid sort of that horrible mashing that you can get with some, some Lego Technic sets. All right, I'm just gonna close the satellite arms now. At the same time, rotate this around. Got so much play value, this set. And it is so beautiful. Okay, that's closed up now. And then I'll just lower the arm now. Now the satellite actually sits in a little bed here on the base of the model. I can just seat that in. Seat that in nicely, beautiful. Switch it over to the bay doors now. It's so cool. <laughs> Oh, this is great. Okay, so that's a few different functions there. I'm gonna turn the studio lights off now to show you one really, really cool feature. Okay, so it is dark. Now on the rear here, there are some fiber optic type cables. And you can see here, that's sort of giving the effect of the boosters firing. I think that looks really cool. Such a cool feature. I mean, look, for modern day sets, you would have, I'm just gonna turn the lights back on now. You know, for modern day sets, you'd have LEDs in the back here, but I think for a set that is from back from 1996, it's vintage, having those optic fiber elements was sort of probably quite cutting edge for that time, but I think it's really cool. Now there are two final manual features of the set that I'm gonna show you. I'm just gonna lift the set up here. There's a switch here on the wing and that actually retracts the landing gear. And it's very clever, there's a lot, of, a lot of work sort of in terms of different parts that are involved to get all three of those wheels. So there's two wheels at the back and one at the front to switch up at the same time just through one action. So I think that is extremely clever. And then finally, there's another switch on the other wing that actually just alternates these flaps. You can see these lifting up and down now. Very cool, that's for sure. That's where I'm gonna leave this video for now. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you've enjoyed watching me not only build the set, but show you all the features and functions of this amazing model. 
I just wanted to let my subscribers know that at the moment I am publishing videos once every two weeks. In 2021, I'd like to move to publishing one video a week. But at the moment, the reason for only going with one video every two weeks is I'm actually working extremely hard on finalizing a very large classic castle mock. It's extremely large. It's something I've been working on for about two years now. It's definitely getting to the end phases, but there's still a little bit more work to do. I'm going to be showing you that mock probably around about February in the new year. And I'm also going to be publishing instructions online so you can build that model too if you like what you see. I've of course got a lot of work to do to finish it off, do all the photography and of course create some videos of the model as well to show you. Now, if you haven't yet considered subscribing and you really like what you see on my channel, either this video or my other videos, please consider subscribing. I'd really love to have you on board. More videos are definitely on the way. Until I see everyone in the next video, happy building, take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye.